So here's your serger, and this is how it looks when you take it out of the box. One of the things you'll notice is there's this little piece of paper underneath your presser foot, and you want to just take a minute to read that. There's a couple of quick little tips on there that are really important for you to know. To remove that, just go in the back here and raise the presser foot lifter and slide that out. Back here is your thread mast, and what you want to do is lift this straight up. Your machine is already pre-threaded with cone threads ready to sew the basic four-thread overlock stitch. When you lift the thread mast, you may notice that your threads are a little bit tangled, so you want to just pull on the back of these a little bit to smooth those out. And here I can even see these two are a little bit twisted together, so that's just from when it's been shipping. So just pull those out to straighten those out so they're not tangled, tangled up. And the other thing you want to check before you sew it off is look to make sure that the threads are actually tucked into the tension discs here. Um, if they've just kind of worked their way out and they're just riding over the top and you can clearly see the thread, you want to just come back here and just give that a little tug to make sure that they're in the tension discs and you're ready to sew off your first stitch. So let's see how that looks. We're going to come over here and raise the presser foot lifter. Place our fabric in front of the presser foot with a little over the edge so we can see those knives trimming the fabric. Put the presser foot lifter down and step on the foot control to begin sewing. So let's just stop for a moment so we can have a closer look at what's really happening down by those knives. Right here in front of the looper cover we can see the fabric that's just been trimmed away. If I open the looper cover momentarily to show you, you can see the upper blade and the lower blade have trimmed this edge and then the loopers and the needles form the stitch on the trimmed edge. Close the looper cover and we can resume sewing. Let's take a closer look at this stitch. So here's our stitch. We'll see it has the four different colors of thread. The red and the yellow are our looper threads, which are these two right here. The blue and the green are these two, and those are your needle threads. Now obviously your sewing projects, you're not going to want to use all these different color thread in your seam. You're going to want to change to the th same color thread as your project, or something that blends well with it. So let's see how to thread a four thread stitch from scratch. We're going to thread up the machine for four thread overlock sewing. I've taken all the thread out of the machine so we can thread it from scratch. A couple things you're going to need to have handy, your tweezer from inside your removable storage compartment, and you're going to want to have a little scissor handy for kind of cutting those little thread ends before you thread the loopers and the needles. That'll come in real handy. So to start, we're going to open the looper cover. I'm going to raise the presser foot lifter. That's very important so that the tension's released to receive the thread. And sometimes I find it a little easier to just roll my movable knife out of the way so I can just see the needle and looper area a little more clearly and we'll put it back when we're done threading. So let's start with the upper looper. One thing to remember when you thread your serger is think of it as working from the center out. You're going to do the loopers first and the needles last. So we're going to start with the upper looper which is this red one. We're going to come back here to our thread and we're going to bring the thread into the upper thread guide from back to front. And then we're going to thread this thread guide up at the top of the machine, snap it in, and bring the tail end forward while you hold with your left hand, putting just a little bit of tension on it so you're sure that it goes into the tension disc. You might even want to floss that a little bit to make sure it goes in there. There's a thread guide here. Tuck it behind that thread guide. And then we're going to go into the upper looper threading path. You'll notice that it's marked with these red dots. So to thread this, it's kind of like playing connect the dots. So we're going to bring it first underneath this one here. Then we're going to bring it from left to right into the next guide. Make sure that stays in there. And then from right to left into this one. 
And then we're going to use our tweezer to thread the eye of the upper looper. So I'm just going to trim that a little bit, shorten it up. It got a little long on me. And you'll see there's an eye on the upper looper. So we want to put the end of our thread through that eye. If you can't quite reach it, you can use your tweezer. And then grab it with your left hand to straighten it out and pull it through like so. Want to make sure it's behind the lower looper there like that. The lower looper is threaded next, so we're going to grab the tail end of that and bring it through the thread guide at the top of the machine from back to front. Take the tail end in your right hand and tuck it into the thread guide at the top of the machine. Put a little tension on with your left hand as you bring this thread forward and into your tension discs. Bring it down around this thread guide. And now there's a yellow dotted thread path. So we're going to play connect the dots, so to speak, with the lower looper thread path. First from right to left into the first guide. From bottom up into the next guide. From bottom up into the next one. From bottom up into this one. And if you need to use your tweezer, go ahead and grab them and do that. Now this one has one extra little step, and that's what these little diagrams right here are showing you, but let me show you what this diagram is um, illustrating. There's a little place at the end of the lower looper that we need to get the thread in, and you kind of can't see it, but we're going to be able to thread it no problem by just bringing this thread behind the lower looper like this. Grab your tweezer and just bring that thread over and you'll feel it just slide into the end of that lower looper. Trim the thread tail if you need to, if it's a little fuzzy. And now we're going to thread the eye of the lower looper. And sometimes it's helpful to use your tweezer for this. So you can kind of push it through and grab him, grab the end of it. And then the most important thing to remember when you finish the lower looper is that the lower looper thread absolutely must be over the top of the upper looper. If you have it backwards, if you have this lower looper thread underneath the upper looper, your, your machine won't form a stitch. So kind of think of this, I like to think of this little dip on the upper looper as almost like a little holder for that lower looper thread and you'll be sure to have it right. After the loopers are threaded, we're ready to thread the needles. Remember, we thread from center out, so we're going to start with the green needle thread, which is your right hand needle. Bring the thread up, from back to front, into the threading guide. Take the tail end, bring it around the thread guide at the top of the machine. Hold with your left hand to put a little bit of tension on it. Take the tail end and bring it through this groove. Maybe floss it a little bit to make sure it goes in. Bring it around this thread guide then this thread guide. We're going to go over the top because that's indicated with green, so we want to follow the green threading path. And this is our right hand needle, so we're going to bring it around the right hand thread guide above the needle, and now we can thread the needle. So bring the thread through the eye of the right hand needle, grab it with your tweezer, it's a little easier that way. Pull it to the back of the machine, and make sure you place the thread underneath the presser foot. And now we're ready to thread the left hand needle. Last is the blue thread, or our left needle thread. I'm going to bring that up through the thread mast, around our thread guide, the top of the machine. Little tension on that thread, bring that in and feel it floss right into those tension discs. Bring it under this thread guide over the top of blue, because we're following blue thread path. And now we're going to bring that into the thread guide above the left needle. And then thread the left needle. Put your blue thread 
and all your threads underneath the presser foot and then put your movable knife back into its original cutting position and close your cover. Now that our machine is threaded, we need to set the tensions according to the type of fabric that we're going to sew. These are your tension dials right here and there's a range on your tension dials. They go from basically zero and as you turn this dial it can go all the way up to number nine. Nine is tighter as you go down in numbers it's looser all the way down to zero. This line right here is your reference mark and according to my instruction manual for the medium weight cotton that I'm going to sew it recommends that the blue or the left needle be at two and a half, the green at two, the upper looper at two and a half, and the lower looper at two. We'll sew that off and see how it looks and make minor adjustments as necessary. I'm ready to sew. My fabric goes in front of my presser foot. I'll lower the presser foot lifter and begin sewing. It's clear that the lower looper thread is coming around to the top side of the fabric, so the tension on that one is just a little bit loose. So I'm going to come up to my lower looper or my yellow tension dial, and I'm going to tighten that up a little bit and sew this again to see if that is um, the adjustment that I need to get my stitch nice and balanced. So let's try that again. I can see now that my lower looper thread and my upper looper thread are meeting more at the edge, but I'm still a little bit loose on this upper thread. So I'm going to, so you can see it's a little bit loopy here. So I'm going to tighten that one up just a little tiny bit as well and try one more time. I can see here that I'm almost there, so still just a little tiny bit loopy near the edge. The stitches aren't quite tight up against the edge of the fabric. To adjust for that, I'm going to come down here, open the front cover, the looper cover. I'm going to momentarily take my movable knife out of the way, which will make it easier to adjust my stitch width cutting knob. So I'm going to turn this so that I'm going to bring my lower blade over. So it's going to bring my lower blade closer over to where my stitches form. Let's put that upper knife back into position again. Rolling it out of the way just made it easier to turn the knob. And let's try that stitch one more time. This looks great. I have a beautiful four thread overlock stitch that meets nice and clean and snug against the edge of the fabric. Perfect. Now let's sew a three thread overlock wide stitch. <laughs> 